Hi, welcome to my channel, The Gentle Flamingo. In addition to the weekly poetry readings that I've been posting, I thought I'd also share some of my making projects with you. Today I'm going to be making some alterations on this leather bag of mine. It is the Janus Fringe Bag Kit from Tandy Leather. I purchased it a couple of years ago. Um, Tandy Leather is not sponsoring this video, by the way, although I do get practically all of my leather supplies from Tandy. I quite like them. Um, but I, about a year ago, I replaced the original lace with some blue deerskin lace, and the alteration that I'm going to be making today is adding a cutout sun design to the front of it um, with this blue leather behind it. Now, previously, I'd experimented a little bit with cutting out the shapes of the design and gluing them to the front of the bag. I knew it wouldn't last long, but it lasted long enough for me to um, see what it would look like. And in about a week, the points of the rays started peeling up, as I knew they would, so I went ahead and peeled the whole thing off. Now, I did get a little bit of benefit out of that, um, because when I peeled it off, it peeled off the top layer of the leather. I guess that would be the epidermal layer. Um, so I don't have to trace the design on the front of the bag anymore. I can just cut out the shapes um, as I see them. But before I cut out the shapes, I do need to mark some stitching holes because um, in addition to gluing the leather um, behind this front flap, I will also be sewing it down. So hopefully this time it'll last just a little while longer. To make sure that I get my stitching holes relatively even around the whole design, I made myself this stencil out of some cardstock traced my design on it, eyeballed the spacing of my stitching holes, marked them, and then punched them out with a large needle. Then I cut out the center, my two marked rays, plus one more just so I can line everything up as I work my way around the design and mark all the stitching holes onto the bag. Well, all right, that didn't work. I guess the template that I used to make my stencil was just a tiny bit too small. Well, plan B, we're just gonna eyeball this whole thing. Now it's time to grab my trusty leather shears and cut out all the shapes. Very carefully, of course, leather shears are rather sharp, as I've learned from personal experience. Next comes the glue. We'll brush it on, put everything together, and then leave it to dry under a book for a little while so it dries nice and flat. Whoops, a daisy. Ended up with a slight misalignment here. Since this is a personal project, I'm not really that worried about it, although if I was making it for somebody else, I would definitely fix it. Once the glue is dry, it's time to punch out all the stitching holes with the smallest punch that I own, a 1 16th inch punch. Thankfully, the two leather layers are relatively thin, so it punches right through. I don't think you can tell from the time lapse, but I end up not following my marks in some placing because the spacing was just a little bit too off. I guess this is a lesson in actually measuring the distance between your stitching holes instead of just eyeballing the whole thing. Oh well. Now it's time for my favorite part, the stitching. I'm using some blue embroidery thread to do a nice little back stitch all the way around the design.
Now since this isn't wax thread, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little glue on all my knots so they don't come untied. Then it's time for just a little trimming so I don't have so much leather flapping around on the back. And ta-da, it's done. All right, that's the end of this project. Turned out all right, I think. Now all I have left to do is to put my buttons back on and go put the rest of my stuff in the bag. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I made myself this little stencil out of cardstock. Why?